So recently I was going shopping for some food when I found a specific packet of dried wow. mangoes. That's great, you may say. Why are you making an entire YouTube video about it? Well, that's because this packet in particular said that there were seven dimensional dried mangoes inside, which is quite intriguing because I've never seen a seven dimensional dried mango before. So I went home excited to see what was inside the packet. But when I opened it, I realized I was scammed. There were only normal three dimensional dried mangoes inside. So before I went to beat up the cashier, I wondered to myself, what would actual seven dimensional dried mangoes look like? Our world is three dimensional, meaning it is made up of three planes, life, height, and width. All objects that exist have these. If you try to put another plane into the picture, it's simply not possible. So we're now basically stuck with three dimensions with no possible way of making it to seven. But there is a way to make our job easier. We can consider time as a dimension. Since time is also a fundamental component of the universe, just as you need an X, Y, and Z coordinate to pinpoint where the event happened, you also need a time coordinate to fully define when it is. For example, finding me slapping my brother. He could have gotten the place correct, but pinpointed to June 28th, 1919. Something else that also proves the existence of 4D space-time is Einstein's theory of relativity, which states that time and space aren't actually separate, but are the same substance that make up the fabric of space-time. One thing that's special about time is that you can't freely go back in time the same way as you could go back in space. I simply can't reverse myself slapping my brother so to escape the room when my mom finds out that I slapped him. A four-dimensional shape that you probably commonly see is known as a tesseract. I'll explain why it looks like that later in the video. Visualizing a four-dimensional object is already hard enough, but now imagine something that has seven dimensions. Instead of only length, width, and height, and time, you need three more spatial dimensions that are all perpendicular to each other. Now this is all starting to get a bit confusing, so instead of adding on dimensions, I'm going to take away a dimension to try to explain it. Let's interview White Guy, who you might know from some of my previous videos. White Guy lives on a sheet of paper, which is two-dimensional. So, White Guy, how's it like being two-dimensional? Flat. That's not a very good answer. Could you please elaborate? No. Literally, I cannot elaborate because I only have length and width. So if I turn sideways, I- You what? Yeah, I think he's gone. Never mind then. Let's try to imagine White Guy's field of view. If I were to draw a box around him, he would only be able to observe the inside of the box. Now if I place a two-dimensional dried mango outside the box, he wouldn't be able to see it. White Guy's a cartoon drawing, so you wouldn't be able to see this, but if actual two-dimensional organisms did exist, we would be able to see all their organs and internal structures. Hence, a higher dimensional being would be able to see ours as well. That's kind of disgusting. Bro, the shot's not over yet. Now back to before we were being rudely interrupted. Imagine Michael Jackson, a three-dimensional being, descended down into the second-dimensional world. To White Guy, Michael Jackson wouldn't appear as a full human as we would see it, but rather a slice, a cross-section of sorts. Like if you took a mango and cut it into very thin slices. Can you please take Michael Jackson away now? He keeps slicing around. It's very disturbing. Alright, fine. You get the point. If a higher dimensional being were to appear in a lower dimension, they would appear to constantly change, disappearing and slicing, explaining the tesseract shape I showed earlier. You can imagine a seven-dimensional dried mango using coordinates. A normal mango would need three numbers, x, y, and z for space, and t for time. A seven-dimensional mango would instead look something like x1, x2, x3, all the way to seven, with one being time. We can only perceive the first three components, however, since we ourselves are three-dimensional. So, mathematically, what we see is the intersection between our three-dimensional space and the seven-dimensional object. While the actual shape of the mango may stay the same, the intersection may change, making the mango appear to morph or vanish. This is the same reason that a three-dimensional object passing through a two-dimensional world would look like shifting slices. Higher-dimensional geometry also behaves in a strange way. In any number of dimensions, size doesn't scale intuitively in a linear fashion. If you scale an object by a factor of k, its volume scales by k to the n, where n is the amount of dimensions. This means that tiny changes along dimensions we can't perceive corresponds to huge changes in how the object might intersect in our three-dimensional space. Another interesting fact is that in higher dimensions, most of an object's volume is concentrated far away from the center of the object. Here's a graph showing the volume of an object's radius when the dimension changes. This shows the unreliability of volume distribution, and that the cross-section can sometimes cut through places with lots of volume and sometimes nothing at all. In conclusion, if you were to actually open a packet of 7-dimensional dried mangoes, here's what you would see. 1. Weird mango blobs appearing and disappearing. Two. A mango slice that changes the more you look at it. Three, a seemingly indefinite volume of mango. And four, mum yelling at you because you summoned an eldritch fruit entity into the house. 
Before we finish, I would like to say the very cliche line of please like and subscribe since I've spent a lot of effort on this video. Also, if you'd like to send me art, please do so on Discord. I've received these pieces from these very nice people here. And also thanks to my friend Torben for voice acting White Guy. Bye bye!